Hello friends, I hope you're doing great in the markets and the markets are treating you well. Last week, I advocated to you that the Fed has given a booster shot to the emerging markets, including India, and what a booster shot it proved out to be. Our markets have hit a new all-time high on the Nifty, and the Bank Nifty is also attempting to breach or at least test its previous highs that it made in February of 2021. Now, in this video, I'm going to continue with the tradition of uh, using our in-house statistical uh, tools that you won't find anywhere else in the public domain, which are simple yet highly effective in gauging or guesstimating what the market is probably like to be next week. And let's dive right in. Coming up on your screen is the market uh, uh, roundup window, which tells you that uh, the Nifty outperformed the bank Nifty by a small margin. The rally was largely due to a weak Dixie, which is the US dollar index. And this is something that I had advocated to you because uh, the US Fed uh, uh, failed uh, to cut uh, the uh, raise, I'm sorry, raise the interest rates uh, uh, domestically, and uh, which is why the dollar fell, which of course is to the benefit of emerging markets, including India. Now, <clears throat> the risk on sentiments saw gold witness profit taking at higher levels, whereas silver jumped on a week on week basis. Do remember, Silver finds application in industry, especially the electric vehicles, uh, 5G technology, mobile telephony, which is, and uh, uh, also Internet of Things. So silver was relatively an outperformer compared to gold. Oil was lazy, but gas flared up. And this was because of supply uh, worries due to Hurricane Ida in the USA. The United States dollar fell against the rupee on the domestic uh, currency exchanges, which by now I have uh, explained to you how is positive for us uh, uh, because it controls our domestic uh, inflation. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, the 10 year benchmark bond yield, which fell uh, 10 basis points from 6.26 to 6.16%, uh, which is uh, 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 kind of positive for the banking uh, stocks. We'll discuss uh, why and how much exactly in just a bit. The MWPL, which is the market wide position limits, rose on a week on week basis, which is routine uh, uh, till the third week of the derivative cycle after expiry. Uh, because bulls tend to uh, build uh, long positions which uh, they have uh, uh, kind of surrendered uh, on expiry day. Now let's examine the basis chart. The basis is nothing but the premium enjoyed by the future over spot. Now the basis chart shows the bank nifty futures enjoying a higher premium as compared to uh, uh, the nifty 50 basis. This is because Months and months of uh, weakness in the bank nifty had made the bears careless and now they are being squeezed out of their short positions. So anytime the bank nifty declines, you immediately witness uh, uh, short positions uh, uh, getting covered and which is what keeps the bank nifty futures premium higher than the nifty futures premium. Now, let's take a look at the index and stock futures volumes. Do remember, this is a cumulative figure of uh, the September, October and uh, November futures series. This shows a pickup, which tells me that traders participation increased in spite of the market moving up. According to me, this is a positive indicator because uh, uh, we want traders to be convinced about the up move and therefore participate well. Friends, let's now go to a very important uh, study uh, that you won't find elsewhere again. This is the impetus, which is uh, a study by our in-house uh, uh, statistical model, uh, the IBEX, and it measures the statistical momentum. Last week, 
I told you that impetus could pick up any time uh, due to our in-house studies and the way it did propel the markets to new highs. The Nifty impetus is at a period high and the Bank Nifty is also nearly there, which tells you why the Nifty kind of outperformed the Bank Nifty. This, of course, is a positive sign and the bulls will need to keep it going. Otherwise, the upthrust runs a risk of slowing down marginally. Now, let's see one of the most uh, uh, popular studies from our uh, statistical model, which measures the footprint of various types of uh, uh, traders in the markets out there. First of all, let's take a look at the FII's index future exposure, which went up on a week on week basis to 3,52,529 lots from a previous week of 3,1890 lots. Stock futures uh, 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 long positions fell a little bit, just a little bit to 53,294 lots, which was earlier 54,752 lots. The DIIs, the domestic investment institutions, uh, uh, continued to press their short positions and their index future shorts went up to 81,965 lots, which last week was 71,896 lots. Ditto for uh, uh, the DII stock future shorts, which is again at uh, a period high at 12,83,091 lots, which was last week at 12,62,835 lots. Let's now take a look at the prop traders who are savvy, uh, well-informed market insiders. Their uh, index uh, uh, futures remained short and their shorts actually went up because uh, the index future short stood at 24,615 lots, which was earlier 20,850 lots last week. Their stock futures longs also continued to fall. Remember, uh, uh, expiries come and gone. And in spite of that, the prop traders uh, stock futures longs are uh, kind of easing. Uh, their uh, uh, stock futures longs are now at 1,28,416 lots, which uh, uh, last week last week stood at 1,43,150 lots. The retail segment uh, basically uh, uh, saw the index futures longs go up marginally to 53,286 lots, which last week was 37,994 lots. Their uh, stock futures uh, long positions continued to fall and uh, they stood at 8,2146 lots, which last week was 8,17,544 lots. Friends, let's now go to the bond market, which I have told you from my point of view is a very important market. Unfortunately, underrated, ignored and even underweighted where studying it is concerned. But this, my friends, you know by now is the fountain, is the source of money supply for all other asset classes. And the bond market told us that the yields as you can see on your screen fell by 10 basis points which means bond prices went up this is partly due to the u.s federal reserve indicating that it is not open to the idea of raising rates since bond prices appreciated the banks who hold majority of the bonds they saw their bond portfolio witnessing mark to market gains now, I've been advocating watching the bond market since years because these are, like I said, the not only the fountain of money supply for other asset classes, but they are also uh, of paramount importance to traders who trade the bank nifty as well as bank stocks. 
And since bond prices are rising, the specter of rising rates in India seems to have receded into the background, which means that bank stocks and by default, the bank nifty have a good probability of rising further in the weeks ahead. That also goes for interest rate sensitive sectors. And you must watch the 10 year benchmark bond yields every day if you want to have a high probability blueprint for trading the bank nifty. So far, so good. As long as the yields keep rising, uh, maintain uh, optimistic bias on uh, uh, the markets overall. Let us now take a look at the US dollar index or the Dixie. This index weakened on a week on week basis, which is what boosted the emerging markets, including India. A falling dollar results in cheaper imports, including imports of oil and gas, which means possibly lower inflation. Take a look at the daily chart on your screen, which shows a decline on five out of five trading uh, sessions last week. The fall is rather pronounced and the price is far below its 25 day exponential moving average, which means upsides will run into selling pressure as it gets closer towards the 25 day exponential moving average itself. In the larger scheme of things, the 91 and a half level will be a support area to watch out for in the coming days. This is something that I have been telling you uh, since the last few weeks itself. Now let us take a look at the weekly chart. This is the second consecutive week uh, of declines and the price has closed precariously at its 25 week exponential moving average, though the average was breached intra week. Any dip is uh, 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 welcome for emerging markets uh, and hard assets uh, and the same will be needing to be monitored in the coming days because a weaker dollar will strengthen our markets fairly uh, uh, proactively. As of now, only a breakout above the 93 and a half level can revive sentiments for the bulls. Unless this happens, the bulls are clearly on the ropes. Last week, I advocated a range between 93.75 on the upside and 91.25 on the downside, which held perfectly. The coming week, I expect an estimated, I repeat the word estimated, range between 93.20 on the upside and 91.05 on the downside. Watch this index more keenly than ever for the coming week. Friends, let's now take a look at the Bank Nifty, which gained 3.18% last week and it rose on four out of five trading sessions and stayed above its 25 day exponential moving average, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen. That means even the short term outlook remains positive and what you are also seeing is that the pattern is of higher lows and a breakout above the 36,500 level is now established. Like I told you, once 36,500 is overcome and the bulls are able to sustain the price above this level, the probability of testing the previous high has risen. Like I said, the bulls need to keep the index trading above the 36,500 levels for most of the coming week. Let's now take a look at the weekly chart, which shows a prominent bullish candle. And this has taken the index to a six month high. And that diminishes the possibility of big ticket selling, barring any unforeseen circumstances or news event. The price stayed above its 25 week exponential moving average, which means the medium term outlook also remains positive. And in the week before last, this index was at number four of the most volatile list and it stayed there last week as well. Last week, I advocated a range between 37,025 on the upside and 34,250 on the downside, which was marginally overcome on the upside because the week's high 
was at 37,140, which is 115 points higher than where I said it would stop. <clears throat> the coming week is likely to see an estimated, I repeat the words estimated, range between 38,175 on the upside and 35,350 on the downside. Friends, I would suggest you continue to trade light because of the volatility being higher in the markets. Let's now go to the Nifty 50, which is the most liquid tradable derivatives instrument on the NSE derivative segment. It gained 3.70% last week. And like the Bank Nifty itself before it, it rose on four out of five trading sessions uh, uh, last week. It's now trading in blue sky territory, which is all time high. And this is a boon for the bulls because no trapped bulls will come to provide overhead selling pressure because they are trapped at uh, uh, long positions, which they bought at significantly higher levels. So that's not happening. Note on the daily chart on your screen, the price is comfortably riding above its 25 day exponential moving average which means even the short term outlook remains positive. The horizontal channel has uh, uh, seen a period of consolidation in the month of June and July. If one was to consider this as a midpoint of a measuring move, then the possibility of the Nifty going up to 17,750 to even 17,900 is quite possible in the coming few weeks. Now, friends, take a look at the weekly chart. One can see a large bullish candle at the all time high and the price is significantly higher than its 25 week exponential moving average, which means even the medium term outlook is positive. Now, if this index was to consistently trade above the 16,500 levels, it will keep the bulls in command and therefore they must defend this level in case of any dips. In the week before last, this index was number 22 on the most volatile list, but it jumped significantly because the beta jumped. Do remember that uh, this is a sign of caution uh, and uh, rising impetus, which I had uh, indicated to you and I shared the chart with you earlier, showed a big surge in the Nifty, which as uh, uh, statisticians and systems trading uh, 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 fans will tell you, results in beta clustering. Beta is uh, pure price volatility and beta clustering means very large spikes uh, uh, and uh, large price moves in either direction will uh, follow in very close uh, uh, succession. So it could be very high one day, it could be very low the next day, it'll basically give you a lot of jitters. So this needs a, a little bit of careful trading and this high beta clustering can become a challenge for retail traders. Last week, I advocated a range between 17,125 on the upside and 16,275 on the downside, which like the bank nifty itself, uh, uh, the peak was breached on the upside because the high was at 17,340. So uh, remember that the impetus uh, of the Nifty is at a period high, which is not uh, surprising that the upside uh, exceeded uh, uh, the anticipated uh, range. The coming week, is likely to see an estimated, I stress upon the word estimated here, range between 17,775 on the upside and 16,850 on the downside. Friends, the beta or the pure price volatility being high, I would suggest you continue to trade light and uh, adhere to your stop losses diligently. Friends, now the indice is done, let's now go to uh, one of the most popular segments of this video, wherein I give you five stocks, which are high beta, high impetus, wherein you take small exposure, wait for large price moves, and five stocks, which are low beta, low impetus, where you take big exposure, 
and wait for small price moves. Why the difference? Because different traders, different attitudes and aptitudes, therefore different game plans. So the high beta high impetus stock list is led by Exide Industries at number one, number two, Voltas, number three, Shri Cements, number four, Havels India, and number five, Aisha Motors. The low beta, low impetus stock list is led by JSW Steel at number one, number two, Sale, number three, NMDC. My God, three uh, uh, metals counters in rapid succession. Number four, PEL, and number five, Petronet LNG. Friends, this hierarchy or this uh, 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 list can change from day to day because volatility can expand and contract hour to hour and day to day. Do connect with me on social media wherein I update all these aspects in very simple to understand yet highly effective and accurate uh, studies which you won't find anywhere else uh, in the public domain. My contact coordinates will come at the end of the video. Uh, uh, please do connect with me on social media. We'll get conversations going and help each other become better traders. Friends, if you liked my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, click on the bell icon so you receive uh, instant updates of fresh videos being put about here. Good, bad or ugly, keep your comments coming and help me reach out to fellow like-minded investors and traders by referring my video to your family and friends. Friends, below the video in the description segment, in the description uh, 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 kind of uh, drop down menu, you will see a hyperlink to my YouTube uh, a playlist on Equity Masters channel. I put up a couple of uh, uh, ideas there every week. Do subscribe to my playlist there on that channel. Also is a hyperlink to a free trading guide from Equity Master. Do avail of this fantastic offer and download that guide. Friends, I thank you for your patience, for watching my video. Do take uh, good care of your trades and investments. Uh, I wish you a very, very profitable week ahead till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. Take care. Bye-bye.